to present about interesting emergent concrete te uh, construction technologies uh, in civil engineering. And uh, the first one I'm going to talk about voided by axial slabs. And as you can see, uh, typically uh, there is uh, in slabs there is bottom reinforcement. You can see, for example, this, this, and then uh, whose edges are here. And then there is the top reinforcement, for example, this. Now, typically you pour concrete to fill in the, the spaces. But in this case, to avoid using too much concrete, we use uh, balls such as this. And so they can be spherical balls. They could be um, square. They could be um, um, uh, oval, etc. So this, the shapes are used to fill in the spaces together with concrete. And then one advantage of this is that they significantly reduce the amount of concrete. Thus, we have lighter structures. And just to to bring clarity, uh, if this building is say, uh, this one is maybe a hundred floors, and so those are hundred stories. So assume one story is maybe 10,000 tons, I don't know, 10,000 tons. That means for a hundred floors would be ten thousand times no no a hundred times ten thousand tons. So it means this the entire building would be one million. The entire weight of the building would be one million tons. Now if we use pure concrete, but if we add the balls or voided by axial slab, we could bring down this weight down to just uh, uh, 500, sorry, as, mm, we could bring this weight down to 500 mm, thousand tons. So this is why we're saying it is a uh, will lead to light structures and that's important because the the lighter the structure uh, will make the lighter the structure then the easier it is to design the foundation of the building something we cannot get into right now but this is the principle so if we have a heavy structure uh, it is more costly first of all and then difficult, uh, costly in terms of design, uh, including design of foundation. If it is cheap, if it is light, then it is cheap overall, but also cheaper to design the foundation. So this is the uh, advantage. Over, above all that, the balls are made of plastic. So then, um, there is sound insulation. The structure would have better sound insulation. Acoustics, good for the acoustics. Also, the, the, there is heat insulation because plastics are poor um, uh, conductors of heat. So there is, uh, there is uh, increased fire resistance. However, we have to contend with, because we have reduced the stiffness, uh, the voids will reduce the stiffness. So the voids uh, occupied by the plastics will reduce the stiffness. So there might be some increased uh, 
uh, deflection issues which you can uh, uh, deal with but from literature actually the deflection only increased by 10 percent and the cost the the cost or the amount of concrete reduced can be up to 50 percent so by using voided bioxyl slabs you can reduce the cost of a structure by up to 50 percent this is at least from literature the issue with the deflection i think can be easily solved uh, uh, in design can e easily uh, catered for in design so overall overally uh, the the advantages of biaxial uh, slabs voided by axial slabs far much outweigh the uh, the disadvantages and also we can also deal with the disadvantages uh, easily by uh, in, uh, by coming up with appropriate designs so number two we talk about self-compacting concrete or in short called SCC now these are special kind of concrete design to compact under its self weight so this eliminates the need uh, to use um, 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 mechanical compaction methods and uh, it is quite useful for spaces for places where the spaces are limited for example uh, just what they For example, when we talk about the voided by exhaust lab, because of the plastic, the voids, I mean the balls, it would be very difficult to compact. So in such a case, you can use self-compacting concrete. And because we do not need to use machines, you know, like the, uh, the compactors mostly use, um, concrete compactors mostly use probably uh, apart from the electric we probably the ones that use diesel then diesel when they use fossil fuel then you know that that would be it would lead to greenhouse gases so when we eliminate the need to use these kind of compactors then we reduce greenhouse effect so this is uh, important now this self-compacting concrete was developed in the 90s in Japan and it is a quite interesting uh, can be adopted easily for for uh, construction needs lastly in this particular video we talk about self-healing concrete also referred to as bioconcrete or bacterial con concrete now this because it has the word bio in it, it must have some bacteria. And this is meant to enhance the durability or self-healing action. Now, this requires some knowledge of concrete a little. Now, in most additional cement uh, mixes, 20 to 30% of cement is left unhydrated. So if this is the case, then we can, we can add some bacteria uh, which is inactive into the into the concrete inactive bacteria and according to data from literature this bacteria can remain inactive for up to 200 years yes now so in self-healing concrete when a crack occurs, uh, let me explain here, let me delete this. So, in self-healing concrete, when a crack occurs like this, then air and water gets in. So this is air and water. So when air and water gets in, then the bacteria becomes active. Now, when the bacteria becomes active, plus the hydrated cement, so the 
hydration process occurs uh, facilitated by the bacteria. So the byproduct of the hydration starts to fill up the void and then the void disappears. So this is what you call self-healing uh, concrete. So if you can see from this, this particular illustration, uh, so at zero days, then there's a crack. After five days, when there's a crack, air and water gets in, air and water gets in here, and then the bacteria also becomes active. Active, and then the process of hydration occurs, and then you can see the the crack try to to reduce. The, so this is through the hydration process, and then and then. Okay, I think this is sample A and sample B. So in 20 days, uh, you can see the the crack can can uh, uh, completely heal, self heal, or so to speak. So this is like the control experiment. Sorry, I think the first one is the control. So this is the control where the crack does not control so this is the control I think the first one is the control experiment because the crack does not close and this is the actual the self so the self healing concrete is the second one where you see Zero, there's a, zero days there's a crack, after five days it starts to close, and 10 days and 20 days it has closed completely. So, simply put, like in conventional uh, uh, cement, 20 to 30 percent of cement, uh, in conventional concrete, 20 to 30 percent of cement is left unhydrated. So, in self-healing concrete, we make it with some inactive bacteria, when a crack occurs, then the bacteria becomes active and then when air and water uh, uh, go uh, uh, permits uh, what do you call it penetrates sorry when air and water penetrates the the crack or through the crack spaces the bacteria becomes active and through the action of the bacteria and hydration of the and hydrated cement uh, on the through the hydration the process of hydration of the previously unhydrated cement the byproducts of uh, this hydration starts to heal or close up the gap in a process called healing so this is uh, I'm sure you find this uh, interesting so this brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoy. If you like many more of videos like this, you can